All right, as soon as this icon goes on, we are now recording. We are live. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is locate that Finder icon. Locate and open up the Finder icon at the bottom of the screen. Once you've done that, go to Applications. So let's open that up. We go to Applications, which is right here. And open up Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. That's Creative Cloud. And open up Photoshop. So we go to Applications. We Under here, we're going to locate... Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. If you hit the drop down arrow like that, it'll show up Adobe Photoshop. You're going to double click on that. I already have it open though at the bottom of the screen, so we're just going to pop right into it. So here we are into Photoshop. I'll move this over so you guys can see a, a better screen here. All right, this is a Photoshop interface. You're going to be very familiar with this by the end of the class. But just to give you a quick tour, on the side here we have our toolbox. We have our menu bar at the very top of the screen here. And over here, we have our layers, channels, and path area. Mainly, we're going to be working with layers, though, for the purpose of this class for the most part. OK, so number two, once you're in Photoshop, click on File in the menu bar at the top left-hand corner of the screen and click on New. So File, New. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-N. What I love about Photoshop is if you look right up here, right, right next to it, it gives you the keyboard shortcut. There's right there, there's the command icon and then N. So if I come out here and I just hit command N on the keyboard, which I will do, it'll open up the new dialog box. So these are called dialog boxes. Um, you'll see these for all different types of things. Okay, once the new dialog, dialog box appears, Title your project like this, the name of the project, the date, and your initials. So for example, shutter speed, 0209-2016, JB, those are my initials. Be sure to never use any special characters like backspaces, commas, hyphens, semicolons, whatever. Don't use any special characters. Numbers, letters, and spaces, that's all that should ever be in a title. If you try to put one of those things in, it'll say, it cannot save this file. So make sure that you follow this format. I'm teaching you this format because moving forward, every single project that you do in, in photography or media production in this entire school will be labeled like this. This is a system, we talk about this in depth in photo two on the importance of this, because years from now, you would be able to go into your library and locate this in about mm, two seconds. So there's, a, there's a, a method to the madness here. All right, so we're gonna title that, so. This is shutter speed, so I like to use the hashtag kind of format. So I only capitalize the first letters of each word. And then the date, 02, 09, 2016, and then my initials, capital JB. Alrighty. Number three, set the width to 11 inches. I'm gonna emphasize the inches here because many of you, are, the first time you do this, you're, you're going to accidentally set it to pixels. So make sure it's inches, okay? And right here on the left-hand side, so 11 inches. If I hit this drop-down box, it gives you other options. But we're going to do inches, okay? 11 inches. The height to 8.5 inches. And the resolution to 300 pixels slash inches. And the background contents to transparent. Transparent. Leave everything else as its default setting. So I put a little picture of it in there. It's really small. But this is the exact same dialog box. Once you've done that, click OK. And now we have a brand new blank canvas. This is the same dimensions as what? A piece of paper. All right? I did that intentionally. So I can print them out if I want to. All right, now you have a blank canvas. That's number four. Next, you're going to insert your SD card into the SD card slot on the iMac. Be sure to eyeball it and insert it into the proper slot. Now, I say this, and I say this every year. I repeat myself over and over again, and I will continue to do that because inevitably, someone in this class is going to reach over here, not look, and stick the um, SD card into the CD card slot. So everyone, if you have a computer in front of you, look around the side of it. You'll notice there's two slots, a big one and a little one. Okay, make sure you put it into the little one. Every year I have to fish. 
um, SD cards out of that CD card slot, and that's not good for the computer. At one point, we had one in the computer for over a year and a half. So please eyeball it. Make sure you're putting it in into the proper slot. Now, the label's going to face out. It'll slide right in. Just like this camera, if you try to put it in backwards, it won't go. So don't force it. It'll go nice and easily. Okay? It's on the, on the side here. So you insert your SD card. Number five, once you've done... Um, once you, once you have done, um, done that, typo, use the keyboard shortcut Command O. So if this pops up, just exit out of it. Command O. And I'm going to get the Open As dialog box. That's what this is, the Open dialog box. Locate your images. And I put some little clicks on there for you to follow. The first one is Devices. So... We hit this drop down menu here. Right there, it says devices. See devices right there? So you can locate devices. Then you're going to locate EOS Digital. There it is. And then it's going to give you some options here. The first one is DCIM, which is this one. Hit the drop down menu there. And then 100 Canon. And underneath there, you're going to find your images. Now, if you only take three images, this will be super easy. You can just highlight all three, you're done. But if you take multiple images and try it a few different ways, you're going to have to go in and select just the images you want. The way that you do that is you can hold down the command key and you can select individual pieces or unselect. Say you accidentally select four, you can go in and say, oh, I don't want that one. But for this case, I only took three images, so those are the three we're going to use. And then click on open. So what it's going to do now is open all three images in Photoshop. Okay, number six. All three of your images will now be open, and it is now time to crop them. I'll put a little picture on there for you. Select the crop tool from the toolbox on the left-hand side of the screen, and there's your picture. So it's the one that looks like this one right here. And then you're going to crop your image to a 3.5 inch wide by 4 inch high And the resolution of 300 px slash in. And I put a, if you flip over your paper, you'll see I put a little picture of that in there for you as well. So it is 3.5. Oh, that's it. I put 2.5. My bad. 3.5 by 4 by 300. So it gives you approximately a square that looks like this, right? So once you've done that, you are gonna you can reposition it to where the, the pinwheel is right in the middle, just like that. And then you just simply hit Enter, and it'll crop it for you. I'm going to do that to all three of my images, OK? Let's see, where are we at here? Crop each image by using the, crop each image, then by using the Move tool, which we'll get to that next. So let's crop each image. So this one. Got one more. And then by using the move tool, that's the next step here. The keyboard shortcut to switch. So right now, you'll notice that it's on the crop tool. See that's right here? I'm going to push V on my keyboard. That's it. Just V. Watch what happens. It's going to jump me right up there to the move tool. Okay. You're going to drag each image to your canvas. The process here is kind of a hover and drop process. So I will demonstrate. You're going to click on the image. You're going to drag it up here to where your canvas is. And then you're going to bring it back to the middle. Hold, this whole time I'm doing a long press on the mouse. And then I'm going to drop it right in the middle. Okay. So this one I know is going to be on the side. So Here's my middle image, so let me do that. Hover, drop, last one, bring it up here. Does that matter which order it's Yes, it does, and we'll demonstrate in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to place my first image directly in the middle of the page. Now, I love Photoshop because it gives me those little lines. See the lines there? It tells me that's the smack dab middle of the project, right? So now, the rest of these should be really easy to line up. So I click on this one. I'm going to hold down Command. That way I can easily switch between my images here. And now we're perfectly aligned. Hit Command again to select this image. 
pull it over. Now I have perfect alignment of my images. Okay? So there's, there's a little diagram on your skeleton notes, notes there of what it should look like. What's on my screen should look exactly like what's on your paper. Number seven is now time to add text. Locate the text tool icon from the toolbox. I put a little picture of it over there for you, and it's pretty obvious. It's the T. So there's the T. That's our text tool icon. Choose the font, capital S, capital T, capital I, capital I, X, capital G, lowercase E N E R A L italic. So sticks general italic, and the font to 60. So up here, it's right now it's in bold. I can hit this little drop down box and change it to italic. And then I'm gonna change the font size to 60. And I put a little picture on your skeleton notes in there as well. All right, once I've done that, I'm going to click on top here and I'm going to label it. So the next step is above the pin wall, add your name and period. So real simple. Are you spelling italic? It is I-T-A-L-I-C. So first and last name, period one, or actually this is period four, correct? Just like that. If you want, to, I don't care what color your font is. You can change it up any way that you want. Um, and the way you change your font colors right down here through your uh, your tabs. I'm gonna make it. Let's see, let's go with a nice kind of blue. Cause I'm kind of a I like blue. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back and use this move tool again. And by clicking on it again, it's gonna tell me right where the middle is. So now it's perfectly centered on my page. Okay. The next step is number eight. Now add the shutter speed underneath each image. And Brianna, this is why it's important to have them in the specific order, okay? You're gonna add one one twenty-fifth of a second, one two hundredth of a second, and one five hundredth of a second. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna again grab the text tool. Your um, settings up here should not change. So the first one was one, one twenty-fifth. Oop, try that again. Uh, gonna do it again. What's the next one? One two hundredth of a second. Each time I'm switching between the move tool and the text tool. So each time I do that, I'm creating a new layer on the side here. All these different layers are what we have. You see them in the lower right hand corner there? And then the last one was one five hundredth of a second, right? I know. I'm going to be doing that right now. There you go. And what's really cool is you see how it gives those purple lines. It tells you that everything's lined up perfectly. All right. That is your project. Pretty simple, right? From this point, we need to save it and turn it in. All right. So number nine, it's now time to save your project and turn it in. You're going to hit Command S on the keyboard. And the save at save as dialog box will appear. So command S. And we get the save as dialog box. Okay? If you titled, if you titled it correctly on the front end, it should also auto-populate on the back end with the correct title. So right there, it's the shutter speed, the date, and JB. Choose the flat, choose your flash drive or your thumb drive as the where. So right here it says where. You're going to choose your flash drive. So you should be able to hit that drop down box, and under devices, it'll say your thumb drive. So make sure your thumb drive is plugged in. I'm going to save mine to the desktop, though, because I'm not using a thumb drive. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to change the format. Um, change the format to JPEG. This is super important. If you turn me in a PSD, I'm going to kick it back to you and say, try again. Okay? So you're going to turn it as a JPEG. Once you've done that, you're going to click save. Okay? Next up, your JPEG options are going to show up. Once you've done this, it will prompt you to choose a quality under the JPEG options dialog box. Choose quality 12, and then select OK. The last step is to turn it into Google Classroom under the Shutter Speed project. All right, so let's take a quick look here. And 
I made it my, my background there. You can see how we have um, Okay, great learning moment right here. What's wrong with that picture? The numbers are backwards. I got two of the images back backwards, okay? This image should be here, and this image should be here. So we can actually go into Photoshop and fix that right now. So I'm going to go in here. Yep, the sharper image should be over here, and then vice versa. Bam. All right. So I'm going to go back in, File, Command S. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. It's going to ask me if I want to replace it. Yes, I do. Only 12. Now we're good. All right. That's better. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's a better example of what it should look like. We have 1 of a second. We're showing motion blur. One two hundredth of a second where we have a little bit of blur, and then one five hundredth of a second where things are nice and sharp. That's what we're going for here. At this point, you would then, from your thumb drive, turn it into Google Classroom. Do you guys have any questions? No, sir. All right, so I'm going to hit this little icon at the top.